On this day, 150 years ago, Horatio Nelson, Britain's greatest admiral, died at the moment of his greatest triumph. From the deck of the victory, he smashed Napoleon's dream of conquering Europe. On that deck, he died. His statue looks down on a land that honors him, not merely as the winner of a battle, but as the creator of a navy which still lives, fights, and wins by his tradition. The Duke of Edinburgh, himself a sailor tried in battle, leads the nation's homage at Nelson's monument. A quarter of a mile away in Carlton Gardens, tribute is paid today to another fighting sailor, a sub-lieutenant of the Battle of Jutland who became King George VI of England. The Queen Mother and Princess Margaret are present for the unveiling of his statue, which is to be performed by his daughter and successor, Queen Elizabeth II. It was Sir Winston Churchill who proposed three years ago that a national memorial to King George VI be established. First of all, he said, we must raise a statue in London to carry to the living generation and to those who come after us a physical presence of the King. This is our first task. Today, that task is accomplished. The Queen reveals the statue of her father, a man who, in her own words, expected to support the throne rather than to fill it but the unsparing devotion which he gave to his duties as Duke of York enabled him to assume with resolution the burden of sovereignty. Eight years ago, I heard the moving words which my father spoke when he unveiled the statue of King George V, which stands by the Houses of Parliament. I did not think then that in so short a time I should be called to take his place. But it is with pride that I unveil this noble statue today. My mother and I are deeply touched by the terms of the address which we have just heard, and we value the tributes which it pays to King George's qualities. Like his father, he expected to support the throne rather than to fill it. But the unsparing devotion which he gave to his duties as Duke of York enabled him to assume with resolution the burden of sovereignty. The pledge which he then gave to uphold the honor of the realm and to promote the happiness of his peoples was the guiding principle of his life. Today is Trafalgar Day, and it is fitting that this ceremony should take place on the anniversary of one of the great events in our history as a seafaring nation. Throughout his life, my father had a deep concern for the welfare of the services, both in peace and war. He saw active service in the Royal Navy. He was the first of his family to enter the Royal Air Force. By his visits to his forces in the field, in Africa and Europe, he brought encouragement to those who had long been parted from their homes and families. He was the living symbol of our steadfastness. He never wavered in his faith that with God's help, the cause of freedom would prevail. I thank the National Committee and those who have helped to provide this worthy memorial. And I now ask my Minister of Works to take it into his charge and to maintain it for all time. I gladly accept the charge which you have committed to my care. Thus on Nelson's day, we honor a sailor king who, like his father, upheld the Nelson tradition. Rarely, if ever, has Trafalgar Day been so split.